Living Theater, A History of Theater by Edward Wilson and Alvin Goldfarb, 7th edition. Chapter 1. Theater, Its Origin and Its History. Why should we study theater history? In conversation, we often use the phrase, that's ancient history, to indicate that a certain idea or object is out of date. And while some artifacts of our past, such as the typewriter, have become obsolete with the use of computers and handheld devices for word processing, there are many areas of study in human endeavors where history is not only still relevant, but also alive and well. One such area of study is the arts, music, painting, and theater. When we attend a stage performance in the 21st century, we are taking part in an experience that incorporates the past in a very real way. In theater, today and yesterday are inextricably woven together. For example, How to Take Awesome Photos of Cats by Andrew Martilla Hi everyone, my name is Andrew and I'm a cat photographer. I'm betting you picked up this book, leafed through some of the pages and thought, wow, this is weird but really cute and potentially useful for my own photos of Fluffy. Welcome. In this wild world where cat photos dominate the internet, I'm honored to be your guide. I hope that the time we spend together will be valuable and that by the end of the book, you'll see a marked change in the photos you take. Personally, I think everyone ought to contribute to the everlasting fountain of feline photos on our feeds, but my goal is to elevate your photos to the next level. While it may be perfectly evident to you that Fluffy deserves a vast audience to appreciate every last whisker on her face, including the ones with leftover bits of breakfast, images are easily lost in the internet shuffle. It's time to make your photos stand out from the crowd. As for me, I've been taking pictures of cats for almost a decade, Surprisingly, for a self-confessed cat guy, it wasn't until later in life that I got my first cat. I grew up terribly allergic to animals and couldn't have traditional pets around the house. Hatchet by Gary Paulson Chapter 1 Brian Robson stared out the window of the small plane at the endless green northern wilderness below. It was a small plane, a Cessna 406, a bush plane, and the engine was so loud, so roaring and consuming and loud, that it ruined any chance for conversation. Not that he had much to say. He was 13, and the only passenger on the plane with a pilot named, what was it, Jim or Jake or something, who was in his mid-forties and who had been silent as he worked to prepare for takeoff. In fact, since Brian had come to the small airport in Hampton, New York to meet the plane, driven by his mother, the pilot had spoken only five words to him. Get in the co-pilot's seat. Which Brian had done. They had taken off, and that was the last of the conversation. There had been the initial excitement, of course. He'd never flown in a single-engine plane before, and to be sitting in the co-pilot seat with all the controls right there in front of him, all the instruments in his face, as the plane clawed for altitude, jerking and sliding on the wind currents as the pilot took off, had been interesting and exciting. But in five minutes, they had leveled off at 6,000 feet and headed northwest, and from then on the pilot had been silent, staring out the front, and the drone of the engine had been all that was left.